Welcome to Stories and Stanza. I'm your host Opro. I'm a writer and I created this podcast to bring you a montage of real stories that make life beautiful as poetry. Today's episode is part of the Fail with Me series. I have had a few difficult years where I felt incredibly isolated. So when I came out of it, I wanted to create a supportive space to help those going through similar challenges. In a world that celebrates success and stigmatizes anything that doesn't fit that mold, Fail With Me aims to normalize and accept failure. I explore the concept of failure from various perspectives and challenge the notion that failing is something to be ashamed of. If we can truly unpack the layers of failure, we will find key to our healing. Please join me in welcoming today's guest. Thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to Stories and Stanza. This is uh, actually my second episode with Sarah. She is a retired behaviorist from Panama and we will be talking about uh, failure from many other perspectives in today's episode. Sarah, thank you for joining us today. How are you doing? I'm doing so well. And thank you so much for including me. You are really an eye opener on this subject of mindfulness and self awareness. So, in the first episode where we opened up about failure was where we started questioning what is failure? Is it black and white or is it gray? And in that episode we talked about the feeling well in passing. Today's episode is called What Are You Feeling? And I am looking forward to exploring the emotional awareness in uh, details with you. So to start this episode, can you talk about the feeling well, please? Sure. One of the things that's important for people to understand is that we feel things and we are taught how to respond to those feelings. But a lot of times we don't know what we feel. And so the purpose of a feeling wheel is to be able to help us drive down to what exactly it is we're feeling. The feeling wheel helps us identify what the emotions are. Because if you don't know what you're feeling, Obring, you really don't know how to address it. And so the power behind a feeling wheel is being able to say, oh, I thought I was angry, but I'm really disappointed. And then you can dig into what that is and you can help heal or you can help um, manage your emotions. But if you don't know what you're feeling, you really are, are powerless. I have taken a printout of the feeling wheel PDF that you shared with me and I have it with me right now. So what I will do is I will upload this in my podcast site and add this as a resource in the episode description so that anyone who is trying to find out more uh, don't have to go through a lot of trouble uh, to refer to what we are talking about. So the link will be here in the episode description. Thanks. Yeah. Can we uh, talk about that? Like, what are the three layers of uh, circles and what's level one, two, or three? So, you are a subject matter expert on this. And can you take our listeners through the different layers of the feeling wheel and what does each uh, circle and each level, level one, two, and three, represent? I'm really curious to find out. Sure. An important thing to know is that there is no one feeling wheel. These were developed back in the early 80s. There's quite a few people who developed different types. The one that I prefer was created by a woman named Dr. Gloria Wilcox. And I'm so excited that you're going to offer it for free. I try to hand it out all the time. But the gist of the feeling wheel is that it starts in the center with some very basic emotions. And a lot of times we know that we're sad 
or we know that we're angry, but we don't really label it any farther than that. And the truth of the matter, Oprah, is that sometimes you might be feeling angry, but the tr more true emotion is that you are feeling jealous or maybe you're feeling that you were disrespected. And so the feeling wheel gives the user an opportunity to either work from the center out. And when people see the visual, this will make a lot more sense. They can work from the center out or they can go from the outside in. So they might read one of the outer rings and say, I'm feeling, maybe I'm feeling abandoned. And then they realize that's further sadness. And so they're able to more correctly label their emotions. And it's important to know that statistically, when someone can label their emotions very specifically, they are 60% more likely to be able to handle it well. So Sarah, the next thing that I want to hear from you is how do you suggest we use it? As in why it is important to know what we are feeling and how we can do this exercise when time comes and it helps us dealing that situation. So there's several reasons. One is it's important to know what you're feeling. Sometimes you're just upset. I have heard so many people say, I'm just so upset today. And that's great. But you, if you can't identify with better specificity what it is you're feeling, then how do you really know what to do with it? But the second thing is that we are often taught that our emotions are bad and being able to label your emotion validates what you're feeling. We should never say, oh, I shouldn't feel that way because the fact that you feel a certain way is it's just neither good or bad. It just is. The important part, Obro, is what happens next. It's okay to be mad. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to be fearful disgusted. Pick an emotion. It's okay to feel jealous. That is something you literally can't control. But the feeling wheel helps you label that emotion so that you can validate it, you can acknowledge it, and then you figure out what happens next. What am I going to do with this? How am I going to deal with this or address it or manage it? I have something very interesting to link this back to and it is related to Ava's workshop that you recommended to me and uh, I have also made a separate episode on that just to cover what I have learned from the workshop on anger and anxiety management so that it's documented and I can go back to it whenever I need to. So uh, I am going to link the feeling wheel with Eva's workshop as well as with emotional intelligence and I want to hear from you around that because in my personal experience I have struggled with emotional intelligence always and I've seen people around me struggle with it so since we are in the series and we are talking about failure can you explain what is emotional intelligence or EQ and why is it so important in today's world? Sure. One of the things about emotional intelligence that people probably don't think about is when we feel bad, we assume that it's because we've done something wrong or I'm a bad person. And so what failure, I love the fact that we're focusing on failure because I have failed more times than I've succeeded. But once I developed my emotional intelligence, I was actually able to learn from my mistakes instead of beat myself up. So the, the point of emotional intelligence as it relates to failure is when we fail and we have low emotional intelligence, 
we are more likely to be angry, defensive, blame other people, totally make excuses for how it, we have n- no responsibility. But the more we develop emotional intelligence, when we fail, we're like, oh, wow, uh, that is not good. What happened? Not who's at fault, but what happened? What can I learn from this? How do I recover? How do I pivot? And so you're more resilient. You're able to re, re, what's the word? Recover from failure more quickly than when you have low emotional intelligence and you just wallow it around blaming everybody. I have a perfect example as well to talk about it today. So this happened today morning. As you know, I have just only started this podcast and I am a couple of weeks old. And I generally got a good response from people and they think that I am bringing out a fresh perspective. And it is not just a literary podcast, but there is so much more to it. Now, today morning I got a feedback that the podcast is really, really bad. And my voice is impersonal and the background music my daughter makes and puts behind it is really really bad and distracts the listener and uh, many other things on the same lines so in other times when i if i would have heard that it would have probably destroyed me to get such a really negative uh, feedback because of my attachment to it and uh, so what I did today was I said thank you to the person and why I did that is because a couple of weeks ago if this happened and somebody would have attacked me like this um, I would have given that person a peace of mind but today I worked toward this and I disassociated my feelings and my disappointment and my uh, being upset from that comment to how I reacted around it. So I think this is something very crucial that I learned from Ava's workshop. Like when we are angry, we get addicted to that adrenaline rush, that rage, and we let out that anger like there is a reason behind it there's an addiction behind it and today somehow i have learned that i can interrupt that cycle i can feel bad i'm allowed to feel bad but if i interrupt that cycle and i do not let that react then i think the emotional intelligence comes into play sure one of the things that's important to remember to remember actually is that There is no correlation between IQ and EQ because IQ is just something that's fixed, but our emotional intelligence can change. You're born with a certain personality. You are born with a certain IQ, but pretty much everything else can change. You can develop your behavior skills. You can develop your emotional intelligence, your social skills, but the catch here is it doesn't really matter how smart you are. If you cannot cope well with the world around you, then your IQ doesn't really matter. And so I also think that your ability to regulate your emotions also gives you the opportunity to focus and use your intelligence in powerful ways. That is so very true. There is no relationship between IQ and EQ. I have struggled uh, to understand this for a very long time, but it's uh, important that we get to see things as they are. We uh, can separate these two things out completely so that we can understand our emotions, we can interrupt that cycle as we talked about, and we can be at a higher plane ourselves. To continue the discussion, I wanted to ask you, 
who taught us how we deal with our emotions <laughs> okay this is where it starts and it's just so messy one person's parents may have taught them you feel what you feel and there's no bad feelings and that kind of thing but there's someone else who like i was raised that it's i call it good girl training that you shouldn't feel too proud of yourself you should never feel too angry you should always be nice and a lot of times men are taught that you shouldn't feel sad don't cry don't ever feel anything that might be perceived as weak and basically we're taught from children that our feelings are either good or bad and different cultures different families different religions teach people different things and sadly we learn these from our parents who learned them from their parents who learned them from their parents <laughs> and so it's just a vicious cycle yes it is so as we are talking about failure in general in the series with failure we are bound to experience emotions so how do we go from failing to building an emotional intelligence so let's say you fail i fail i've failed so many times i'm not afraid of it <laughs> it's like a failure we're taught that failure is so bad and so the minute we, so the question here's my question to you is what is failure is failure we didn't achieve the objective is failure that we didn't learn anything along the way i i i think a lot of times failure is just such a nebulous thing that we've decided that we failed but the reality is we don't look at what we learned along the way the connections that we made the skills we gained any of that stuff true um we have already done this before so i'm going back to our fundamental question what is failure is it just a yes or no question or is it a criteria a scale that we have defined around it yes so the key here is when you fail you're going to feel bad it's okay but the question is are you recognizing that we have feelings but we are not our feelings so i feel bad because i failed but we translate that into i'm a failure and and that's where we go wrong correct uh, you mentioned something that really resonated with me it was you cannot heal what you cannot feel do you want to talk about that sure so let's say you were hurt by something your parents said as when you were a child or your wife said something that hurt your feelings or your feelings you you have big feelings about something what happens is we hide those feelings and then we say i'm wrong to feel that way or i'm stupid to feel that way or i mean pick something and so we try to not feel that but if you don't feel what you feel where does it go it's still there and you will respond in disproportionate ways you will be hurt by other things because it reminds you of this thing so a, a wound an emotional wound doesn't go away just cuz you don't like it so we have to address our feelings to heal to move forward to i'm not talking about getting all mushy at and digging into every little thing i'll be really honest i have failed but i have also been hurt i don't 
believe that I have to go dig back through every single thing that someone said or did to me. But I have to acknowledge that I feel a certain way because of something that happened. And then I have to dig into that feeling. Why do I feel that way? And I have to address that. I am repeatedly going back to Ava's workshop, but I must say that I came across a concept in the workshop that all these negative feelings or trauma or whatever you want to refer it to. Trauma is a good word. Okay, let's call them trauma. So, as in these feelings, when they happened with us in the past, they became ice blocks in our heart, some kind of frostbite, uh, let's say. And when we allow ourselves to feel it, we actually melt it and we let it go. Yes, let's make this a very real example. You were hurt or I was hurt as a child by something our parents said or did. It makes this little ice block. Sometimes we have to go back to be that child and we feel small and helpless and hurt. And then as adults, we parent ourselves and we say, they they shouldn't have said that and they did. And I know that I'm not that bad person. I know that I didn't do or say whatever I did or said that made them angry because I wanted to hurt them. When we go back and do those things and we address those core emotions that we felt and we still feel in our bodies, think about what you feel physically when you're upset. We have to deal with that. The healing comes differently to people, right? In the workshop, I found that it was a big eye-opener. This is my habit from a very young age that whenever I learn something, I try to link with something I had previously known and use that linkage to make sense of it all together. So I use this to think that anger is a bad emotion, but it's not just a bad emotion. There is so much more around it. Remember this, and, and anybody who listens when we talk about failure and when we talk about bad things that have happened, because I was thinking about this week, you write poetry and the people who listen write poetry and stories. That doesn't normally come because you've had a good day. It comes from pain and anger and fear, and it's pouring out of your heart. And so I would just say to anybody who's listening that this concept of failure and anger and you've been hurt, you, what you feel is not bad. The question is, what happens next? It's, it's our response to our feelings that are good or bad. Yeah, so that's how we expand on it, the anxiety and anger management. I even know for me, so if anyone wants to know more about it, they can always go to the anger management episode that I recorded and I have shared the coordinates of Ava and I've told her that she can join us for a conversation and she'd be happy to. So I'm really looking forward to it. Now, to summarize uh, our discussion, we started from unpacking failure and understanding the effects of failure. Then we have linked it with emotional intelligence, trying to understand what the emotions mean and how we actually heal and build our resilience by breaking the cycle of getting into the next step of action. So is there anything else you would like to add here? No, I just want to thank you so much for including me and letting me, uh, you know, 
part of your podcast, which I think you will always have people who will have something to say. Um, and I've had podcasts for years. I've done them before. And you are the only one. If you hire an audio person, they'll tell you if you're doing a good job or not. But when you have people who who spew criticism at you, I think you did a great job of handling it with powerful emotional intelligence. Yes, uh, as I said, it was a big lesson learned for me when I attended Eva's workshop because I'm usually the person who reacts. And I've always been like that. And this is only now I am becoming aware of what I am doing. I am being aware of my emotions. <laughs> yes. But see, this is the thing. We're passionate people. And so harnessing that passion and that, that care and concern for life and for doing a good job, sometimes we don't know how to redirect that into a positive emotion. We just know to be angry, but you diffused it by saying thank you for the feedback. Yes, uh, you're uh, very right in saying I diffused it. And I told myself that this is something I should have learned a long time ago. It would have been very, very helpful. And uh, this is something interesting to my writing career as well. So I am a bilingual author. I write poetry uh, in English and I write uh, prose in my uh, mother tongue, which is Bengali. Now, when I came to Australia, I felt uh, very rootless for a long time and I wanted to do something uh, to promote my mother tongue here. And I used to run a project where I promoted other writers, ran a publication and that sort of thing. And I had a noble intention in my heart that I'm going to uh, promote a culture away from home. But when I was doing that, I felt that a lot of people didn't really connect with my mission statement. And I used to get heavily criticized by different people uh, around that whenever they didn't uh, align with my views. And I used to get like, Facebook hate posts and things like that and I used to feel shattered by it and only if I was aware of emotional intelligence I would have dealt the whole thing very very differently so better let than never I now know what emotional intelligence is and uh, as I said better let than never and I hope that this episode can actually help uh, some other people who might be in the same situation as myself. Yes, because sometimes you just feel angry, but there's this emotional chain of events uh, that you've experienced that really your response has little or nothing to do with what that person said or did. It just triggered you. Exactly. exactly. Yep. I, I used to this anger or sometimes outburst but after the workshop I have started realizing that uh, it's just that I'm addicted to that negative response just to break it once and think about it when we feel angry we feel powerful yes we look at submissiveness as being weak, but it will actually literally takes more emotional intelligence and intellectual intelligence or intellectual control to say, I can be submissive here to diffuse. It's not worth it to engage. Thank you so much for taking the time to come to this podcast and share your wisdom and i wanted to say to our listeners that this is going to be a series so it is uh, my second episode with uh, sarah and uh, in uh, the next episodes we will talk about our 
healing journeys we will talk about relationships we will talk about grief and explore the subject of emotional intelligence and failure from different perspectives and i would love to hear from our guests if they have any questions if uh, they would uh, like us to create an episode on any particular uh, topic uh, of their choice they could always uh, write to us uh, leave some comments uh, and reach us uh, in social media and we will be taking them up for discussions uh, sara what do you think you know i would love it too if any of your listeners want to send you questions that we could answer exactly i, I was thinking about thank you once again sara for taking the time to talk to stories and stanza and i hope the listeners have really uh, been benefited by what we discussed today and see you in the next episode it's my pleasure thank you for having me back for now thank you for listening to this episode on stories and stanza with sarah if you like our podcast please like this video and consider subscribing to the channel we will be back with a new episode next week